Hey everyone, my name is Mac. I'm Stan, and welcome to MES Tech, the hot mess of tech shows that we prove week in, week out. Yes. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about another news topic. Yes. So, Intel. And something very near and dear to Mac's heart. So uh, I'm going to let him take the lead on this one. Awesome. So we're going to be talking about Intel and their lineup of i9 processors. Uh, what we've heard, what the tests have been leaked to reveal, my personal opinions are, his personal opinions are, he's an AMD guy. Well, because we're talking about the i9-9900s, obviously we have to speculate on what AMD is going to be doing for some sort of retort, what their next release is going to be to put the pressure on Big Blue. I don't know. I don't even know where to start. Help well, me out. since you're lost for words, let's just cut to the chase. So <laughs> what we've been seeing recently is that there's a whole bunch of different leak benchmarks. We've been getting leak benchmarks for the i9-9900K on Ashes of the Singularity. There's been Cinebench, all kinds of different stuff that is showing us that the 9900, the first 8-core, 16-thread processor available for consumers, is going to be quite the overclocker, achieving somewhere around 5 gigahertz. Which is absolutely outstanding. Go Intel. There's some really good things there. I mean, 5 gigahertz mark. That's been It's been done with the 8000 series, but it's cool to see on such a multi-thread machine. Uh, we just built a friend's computer for that's a 2600, and it would get about 1300 in Cinebench as far as its scores are concerned. And that's with a stock cooler, no overclocking, except for whatever's on the board itself. So that's quite a number to get past. However, the 6-core, 12-thread machine that was recently released by Intel, which is the 8700K, the other Coffee Lake CPU, mm -hmm. that would still do considerably better because of that enhanced clock speed. Which is amazing. Again, Intel has always been about that single core uh, kind of clock speed increase. But at the same time, they haven't made a huge improvement in the last couple of years. It's been, we went tick, then talk, talk, talk. So it's a little bit different. I was out of the game for a while and my CPU that I had is still right around that 14 nanometer process. So I'm waiting for something to change, Intel. Yeah. So instead of being a brand new 10 nanometer chip, it's a 14 nanometer, but now they're calling it 14 nanometer plus plus. So that's what Coffee Lake S is designated as. And the primary things that we've already seen is that we're going to be getting a 9600K, a 9700K, and the 9900K. And for the first time in Intel history, as far as an i7 is concerned, what's going on? They're coming out with non-multi-threaded processors. Yeah. So eight cores, but only eight threads. <laughs> which so, is... Uh, which feels is Feels cool. kind of cheap compared to the AMD crowd. Yes. Especially because you guys are getting all sorts of really cool stuff with hyper-threading. Well, yeah, so for the first time, really, they've had, uh, you know, the, the hyper-transport and multi-threading availability for AMD has been one of the big benefits of it. You know, you've got your 8-core Ryzen 2700X with 16 threads that are doing all that work, which has made them a great multitasking CPU. Mm -hmm. But Intel's always been a great multitasking CPU as well, but with their 14 nanometer process, they just really haven't had the extra juice to go the extra mile, which is why they've dominated in FPS contests between chips, but haven't necessarily been competing with Ryzen 2700 or 2700X, those kind of chips, in more like workstation-oriented applications. Right, which, you know, with the release of Threadripper, what AMD's doing, uh, who knows what they'll do with the Xeon chips, but at the same time... 28 cores. 28 cores, right. 56 threads. Yeah. Those are, the Platinums are already out. They cost 10 grand. <laughs> If you want to see more about that, you can go check out Linus. Linus has got some crazy stuff that he's been doing with these 28-core, 56-thread. He's got two of them on a motherboard. He's trying to run a $100,000 computer. He's insane. He's got money to burn, and he's burning it in, incel, in like Intel gold. <laughs> but we don't have that kind of money, so we're focusing on the consumer chips that you guys would likely buy. And for me, if I was to go out and buy anything, it, I, can't, I can't feasibly go back and get a processor without hyper-threading in my yeah. mind. It just feels like I'm going backwards. I've I've done the 775 platforms that just started out with hyper-threading, and that was that was awesome. That was a big deal back when AMD didn't have that availability. Yep. And then I moved to an 1151 platform and fell out of the game for a while, and then now I'm getting back into it, thinking about upgrading to maybe a 9700, or maybe something similar. Like and a 9900? No, 90. <laughs> If, the going big, if you're going big, go, go big or go home. You got it. And then, you know, that's the only one that's coming out with hyper-threading? That just feels weird. Yeah. 
So the uh, the three big chips, the 9600K, the 9700K, and the 9900K, we actually saw some like leaked releases on Silicon Lottery for some pre-orders and stuff like that, which has given us a rough price point for where these Intel chips are going to be. So you get the 9700K, which is going to land about $350 to $380, and the 9900K, which is going to be about $450 to $480. And that's also kind of mixed with these leaked benchmarks that are showing... The 9900K has got that potential for 5 gigahertz overclocking on all eight cores, and the 9700K might be able to touch 5.5 gigs on like a really sweet chip. So right. there's, a, there's a lot of potential that lives in Intel world right now. We haven't seen it yet, and it's possibly the worst kept secret in all of computers at this point in time, just because everybody seems to know about it and Intel has never said anything. That could be intentional. We're just fabricating everything here, but you know, if... They're, they, I feel like they have to do a lot of catching up. Yeah, well, the the one good thing is that if you have invested in Coffee Lake, you've got a Z370 motherboard, it looks like the 9, 9000 series is going to be compatible with those 370 boards. And that's very similar to what you've got with Ryzen. If you've got an, a, uh, you know, an X370, that is still going to support that entire AM4 socket until 2020 with just BIOS updates and a lot of really good companies like EVGA and ASUS and companies like that, they're going to continue to supporting those boards until that socket is no longer viable. And that's in both cases. Which um, is awesome. It makes it very cost effective. Even if you're getting into the game, like I am, with these new processors and new boards and whatnot. But you can find a board that was 280 brand new and buy it for 150 bucks. <laughs> and it's going to work with a brand new processor that's $450. Not that he didn't already do that. <laughs> Shut up, man! <laughs> Good God! I know. Secrets. Um, I'm just... I'm, I'm going to cut Intel, that out of the video. I'm an Intel fanboy. This is what happens. <laughs> yeah. I'm t t we're going to cut that out of the video. We've heard some rumors out there as well about AMD's possible response to Intel. So the 9900K looks to be an exceptional processor. It, it's not necessarily going to provide the best value, but for those of you that are going to build... You're going to be... Build. You're going to be building the biggest, the best, the baddest system that you possibly can. It's the only real option. The rumor that we've been seeing is the 2800X that is going to be coming from AMD, which people are saying it's going to be a 10-core processor, it's going to have 20 threads, it's going to have all this kind of stuff. So uh, let's say why that would be beneficial. It's like, all right, so we got more cores, we got more threads, that means that we've got the ability to process more things at the same time. The one thing that really doesn't make sense about that is that the construction of Ryzen, or the Zen architecture, is in four core chunks. So you've got... On every single Zen processor that goes out there, you've got the compatibility with eight cores. However, because of some sort of fabrication error or some choice of AMD, they've disabled them to create your Ryzen 3 series, your Ryzen 5 series, and your Ryzen 7 series. Basically, anytime that you're getting a lower tier Ryzen processor, they're disabling a core on these individual four core packages. And they're maintaining kind of parity between the two to maintain balance. So instead of eight, you get six, and then you get three, and you get, you get, you yes. get four. All right, and then, but if you're thinking about a 10-core processor... Where do they get the extra two cores? Because there's no room on the fabrication for that unless... What are they going to do? Well, they'd have to add another four-core pack. Yeah, so that would most likely result in a larger silicon die, which is going to require either a larger socket, or it's <laughs> going to require an entirely different fab process than what they currently have at AMD, which... As we all know, fabricating a brand new processor is easily the cheapest thing that you can do inside the industry. Oh, yes. no, wait a minute. It's the opposite of that. It is, it is the exact opposite. So that's why the 2800X rumors of being a 10-core processor, they just they, they don't really hold water when it comes to this kind of stuff. When Ryzen comes out with Zen 2, because right now we're in the Zen Plus architecture, mm -hmm. Zen 2 is most likely going to be based off the 7 nanometer process, and it's going to be starting to roll out sometime in 2019. And when you go to the 7 nanometer, from a 14 nanometer, you're essentially shrinking your die size in half, and that's going to allow you to add multiple packets of cores onto that same size silicon. Where would we be? An 8-core base level Ryzen 3. It's uh, now a 16. A 12-core. Uh, well, yeah, so a 12-core out of the Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 series, a 16-core 32-thread machine out of the Ryzen 7s. It's just, there's so much potential in this tiny little chip. I don't want to be here anymore. 
Too much AMD positivity. <laughs> the unfortunate thing about AMD, and unf it's, it's very clear, and it's been clear for a long time, is that they can't compete on clock speed. The efficiency of the actual die process is not necessarily be there to get you 5 gigahertz without some extensive modifications. Even liquid cooling on, say, like a 2700X or a 2600X, it's only going to get you into the low 4 point, like 2, 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz range, which isn't nearly enough to compete with an Intel clocking at 5, 5.1, 5.2, We've seen some of their even higher end processors, like a 7820XE, something along those lines, a real beefy mother foe, <laughs> like clocking 5.2 over all cores at all times. So... The real rub is, when are we going to get the official announcement? When are we going to get official pricing so that that way you guys can buy the appropriate stuff to make sure that you build the biggest, the best, the baddest, or the best budget build that you can? And then, what does AMD do to answer, and how quickly will they respond? We already know that their 7 nanometer is supposed to go in production. Mm -hmm. We know that the Epic processor, which is going to be based off the 7 nanometer, is going to be coming out in testing sometime around the end of 2018, released early 2019, and that's their server-side stuff. So... Consumers should be following suit. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a little bit kind of maniacal. I don't necessarily want to do that. But uh, since Mac is a real big fan of Intel, and I'm a real big fan of AMD, at least what they present to us in the consumer market, it feels like this is going to be a pretty good channel to tune into if you want to see... Uh, maybe a bit of a battle. The 9000 series looks pretty fantastic. Ryzen's answer to that is eagerly anticipated by everybody that is running an AMD chip and that is happy that all of these chipsets are backward compatible or forward compatible with these new processors. But what do you guys think? Are you really excited for the 9900K? Do you really want to see the 7 nanometer chips that are coming out from AMD possibly as soon as quarter number one, quarter number two of 2019? I am. But hit me up in the comments. Hit us up in the comments down below and we can answer your questions so that that way we can start that conversation about what's going on in tech today. I'm Stan. I'm Mac. <laughs> and this, again, is MES Tech, the hot mess of tech shows. The reason that this seems either so lucid or so misshapen is the fact that we are not drinking yet. <laughs> and hopefully that's going to start soon. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go get beer. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as he leaves, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, again, hit us up in the comments. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, hit the dislike button. Let us know exactly what we could improve on. But as always, see you next time. There you go. <laughs> ah, sweet. Thank God. Delivery. <laughs> oh, shit. We haven't broken out the beer yet. Well, do we need the beer for the news? Uh, I guess we're...